Centuries ago, in the heart of medieval Europe, the imp emerged from the depths of folklore, becoming an enigmatic figure in the annals of supernatural beings. This diminutive and often devilish creature first appeared in documented tales during the Middle Ages, a time steeped in religious fervor and superstition. In the eyes of the people, the imp was no mere folk creation, it was branded as a servant of the devil himself. This malevolent force was believed to meddle in the affairs of mortals, playing a central role in the tumultuous era of witch hunts and trials. These historical records paint a vivid picture of a time when belief in the imp was deeply entrenched in the collective consciousness. As the imp's legend traversed time and geography, it underwent a remarkable metamorphosis. Depictions of the imp exhibited a fascinating diversity of traits. It was consistently small in stature, a characteristic that allowed it to easily evade human detection while engaging in its mischievous antics. Its ears were often depicted as pointed, reminiscent of those found on elves or fairies, contributing to its supernatural allure. Some renditions even featured horn-like appendages on its head, a reflection of the devilish associations that had begun to cling to this creature. The imp's skin color could range from reddish hues, emblematic of its supposed demonic nature, to more human-like tones, blurring the line between the mortal and the supernatural. The imp's influence transcended the realm of folklore and spilled over into real-world events. Its association with poltergeist activity, which manifested as unexplained disturbances and noisy, often destructive behavior, became a source of both fascination and fear. Reports of objects moving on their own, mysterious noises in the night, and even physical attacks were occasionally attributed to the work of imp-like beings. Maritime folklore, particularly among sailors, was also punctuated with tales of imps causing shipwrecks. These imps, believed to inhabit the ocean's depths, had the power to capsize ships or lead them astray. Sailors would often perform rituals and make offerings to these entities, seeking their favor for safe voyages across treacherous waters. In the world of literature, the imp took on multifaceted roles, mirroring the diverse interpretations of its character. In the works of William Shakespeare, particularly A Midsummer Night's Dream, the imp manifested as the mischievous puck, responsible for orchestrating comic misunderstandings and romantic entanglements. This portrayal emphasized the imp's penchant for creating chaos and highlighting the unpredictable and chaotic nature of love. Meanwhile, the gothic tales of Edgar Allan Poe featured imp-like figures that exuded an eerie and supernatural aura, adding an element of fear and foreboding to their narratives. These literary renditions further solidified the imp's place in the realm of storytelling, where it could embody both whimsy and terror. While the imp was predominantly a figure of folklore, it also found a unique niche within certain religious and spiritual traditions. Folk magic and witchcraft, realms often entwined with supernatural beings, offered a place for imps or imp-like entities. In these practices, imps were regarded as intermediaries between practitioners and the spirit world. They were invoked to aid in divination, provide protection, or facilitate spell casting, bridging the gap between the mundane and the supernatural. However, the imp's influence extended beyond the confines of esoteric practices. In specific cultures, belief in imps as protectors of the home and its inhabitants became deeply ingrained. These household imps, often referred to as nis, tomt, or kobolds, were believed to watch over the well-being of those living within. They were offered small gifts or tokens of respect to ensure their benevolence, serving as guardians against harm. Imps, 
with their chameleon-like adaptability, became versatile symbols in the realm of cultural expression. Their symbolism ran the gamut from temptation, morality, and fear to the supernatural and the whimsical. In medieval and renaissance art, imps were frequently featured in religious paintings, serving as cautionary symbols in the timeless battle between good and evil. These visual representations reinforced the idea that imps were tempters, luring individuals away from the path of righteousness. In literature, imps played diverse roles in tales that conveyed moral lessons or explored the consequences of one's actions. In the German fairy tale Rumpelstiltskin, the imp-like character aided the miller's daughter while simultaneously teaching a valuable lesson about the importance of honesty. In contemporary popular culture, imps transitioned into more playful and humorous roles. They became characters in books, movies, video games, and animated series, often serving as comic relief or quirky sidekicks. This evolution highlighted their adaptability to changing societal tastes and the enduring appeal of their mischievous nature. Amidst the rich tapestry of imp folklore, scholars, folklorists, and researchers tirelessly sought to unravel the mysteries surrounding this enigmatic creature. Their collective efforts shed light on the evolution of belief systems, the nuances of cultural variations, and the profound psychological aspects of folklore. Through their work, we gain a deeper understanding of how the imp's presence in human narratives has mirrored societal norms, anxieties, and the intrinsic human need to make sense of the inexplicable. In conclusion, the imp, born from the depths of medieval Europe's imagination, has transcended time and space to become an enduring symbol deeply ingrained in the human psyche. Its evolution from a feared and malevolent entity to a whimsical and symbolic figure reflects the ever-shifting tapestry of human beliefs, serving as a testament to the enduring power of folklore in shaping our understanding of the world and our place within it.